Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit of the Wild Podcast Blue Please on CynicalBrit.com. Oh yes, heroic Black Rock Caverns, the full run this time. You've seen the Wipeathon video, I would hope. Half a million people have seen the Wipeathon video. Hopefully they got a good idea of what to expect, and uh, that heroics are not simply a pushover in Cataclysm. Some of them are, but a lot of them aren't, which is a good thing. The revisionists will have you believe that heroics were no pushover in Wrath. Now, as a Wrath beta player, I can tell you that is not the case. They absolutely were. They sucked. They had mechanics that could not kill you, and therein lies the problem. This, on the other hand, is one of the best heroics they have ever put together. It is wonderful. It is a really well-done heroic dungeon. Now, you might be asking, you're not paying any attention to what I'm saying, you're looking at the style and sexy diving helmet that I'm wearing, and most of my group is wearing. The reason for that is there is a guy by the name of Finkel Einhorn. You should know him if you did the vanilla content. He was in UBRS. He was in the belly of the beast. He was a gnomish explorer of some sort. And during his exploration, he got eaten by a giant core hound. We rescued him. He shows up again here. And there are a number of reasons for that. He would like you to save his friend, Raz. You see him in the left-hand corner of the screen there. He has been imprisoned. He is a giant troll berserker. Don't ask me how that relationship got going. Whatever the case, this entire dungeon is tied together by one long series of quests that can be handed in remotely thanks to the handy two-way transceiver inside the diving helmet. Contrivance City, population, you, and everybody else. As to whether or not that's in the normal mode, I couldn't tell you because the last time I did the normal mode was right when it first came out, the first ever dungeon. It was just after Alpha had finished. It was actually, I think, the maybe the third piece of content I actually put out from the beta. Yeah, it was a long time ago in a YouTube far, far away, I can tell you that for a fact. And all of that stuff wasn't there, so I assume it's probably part of the normal mode as well. It's nice, it gets you a fair amount of gold, and there are, of course, rewards at the end. Always good to have quests for dungeons. Personally, I would like to see an awful lot more of them, and preferably don't put them all at the start of the dungeon. I mean, really. I can understand doing it for the low-level stuff, because you remember going all over the place for the Rage Fire Chasm quests. What were there, five? And I think two of them were from Thunder Bluff, and one was from the Undercity, and you expect to go all over those at level 12 to 14? It just seems ridiculous. Now, you've seen the Wipeathon video on this, and this is actually going to have to be chopped and changed because I lost some of the footage here. So, this is half for Wipe, and I'm going to cut it into the success. Yeah, so imagine that we did get out of these chains. Yeah, there you go. And that's how you beat it. <laughs> the full Wipeathon video, which will tell you all that you need to know about the strategy for this fight, is up above right now. You'll see it there at the top of the screen in an annotation. We even got an achievement there. You get that simply by using his Skull Crusher ability to kill 10 of the adds. It's not that hard because that's the way you're supposed to do the fight anyway. Which is why I think it's kind of a lousy achievement. How is it an achievement to do it the way that it's supposed to be done? Now, Raz breaks free here and goes a little bit crazy. We're asked to follow him and he is going to kill a bunch of adds for us, which is very nice indeed. He does this in the normal mode as well. It's nice. It's a little bit cinematic. And it makes you feel like someone's doing the work for you. There's a lot of ads on this bridge, so it's good that he gets rid of them and then decides to jump down there and do crazy things. Now, the trash in the heroic mode is not particularly difficult. That said, as always, we do have a fairly good group for this. I think that a lot of the bosses here are going to trip up certain players, particularly those that played in Wrath. There are a lot of mechanics that are actually throwbacks to Burning Crusade or Vanilla. For instance, the last boss requires quite a bit of kiting an awful lot of kiting due to a stacking AoE healing debuff. You do not want to get hit by that. And you've also got some bosses where the DPS really have to focus and a tank test as well. You might have noticed the very odd concept of putting an exclamation mark on the floor for a quest. All that means is once you walk over it, it enables the next part of the quest and it ties it all together with some nice narrative. Needless to say, I skip through it, and I would suggest that you pause it in order to read it. I can read it in the playback, which is why I feel no need to leave it up on the screen for 20 seconds. It's the nice thing about frapsing everything you do. It's like having a live-action replay. Oddly enough, that's going to be something I do in Cataclysm for wipes. I'm going to be recording all of our wipes. We're going to watch them like a replay, and I'm going to try and figure out how we did it wrong so that we can accelerate our progress quite a bit. It's going to be rather neat. 
Those guys are probably the biggest threat in here. They hit pretty hard. Try and crowd control any pack they're with. Most of them are patrols, so uh, generally speaking, it's not too much of a problem to separate them from the other group. In that case, we actually end up pulling both, which we didn't have to do. That could have been an awful lot easier. Those big evolved Twilight Draconoids do a massive amount of damage to the tank. They also have an ability called Shadow Strike. If you can interrupt that, I would strongly suggest that you do, as it's going to hurt your tank an awful lot. Now, this boss is entertaining on heroic mode. In the normal mode, all we did was we allowed those three cultists right there to evolve into Draconoids. We DPS them down, and then we killed the boss. No problem at all. Needless to say, you can't do that on heroic mode. If you do, it will kill you. And we accidentally pull. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Let's try that again. Now, I'm going to show you a wipe attempt, and I'm going to show you a successful attempt on this particular boss. This is not unbelievably difficult, but it does require the nether spike principle, i.e. you have to stand in the beams for a certain amount of time. If you keep standing in the beams, you will die. Or in this case, you'll be mind controlled and everybody else will die. And then you may also die. It's, it's not good. Aside from the beam mechanic, which you can see, you see those beams coming down from the ceiling right there. As soon as we engage, three beams are going to make contact with each of these ads. You need to get your three DPS to stand in front of those beams and take the beams. If they get 100 stacks, they will turn into evolved Twilight Draconoids and they will kill you. They are unbelievably dangerous and she has a speed and attack speed aura that means you cannot kite them. Stand in the beams until you get around 75 or 80 stacks. Get out of them. They'll have to tick off. Once they tick off, you've got to go back in the beams. As you're going to notice right here, we do screw this up. And we end up allowing one of them to evolve, which kills everybody ever. Because those things hurt an awful lot. Not particularly good thing. This is all about the positioning of the DPS and the timing of the DPS. As to what ability she's got, she's got that aura. And she's got something called Dark Command, which is a 20 to 25,000 damage shadow attack, which causes the target to flee in terror for four seconds. That can happen on the DPS, which means you can be forced out of beam. So you do want to watch out for that. Just make sure that the actual debuff ticks off you before you go back in it. That's generally the best idea. Otherwise, you can't really damage them, so there's no point... So they have jumped out the beam at about 82 or so stacks there. No problem at all. Let's let that tick off. And then I'm going to jump right back in it. When you actually let it tick off is really up to you. As long as it's gone and as long as you can kill them before you have to do a second wave of beams, you're fine. No problem there whatsoever. And we get the Arrested Development Achievement, which is, of course, for stopping them from evolving. Please tell me why we get an achievement for doing the fight properly. <laughs> What's the point there? And I can understand something extraordinary. I thought that's what achievements were supposed to be. It's the problem with achievements. This is the issue that I've got with them. You get achievements like that, which is... That's the proper way to do the fight. Don't let anything evolve. If you let anything evolve in heroic mode, you're probably dead anyway. You saw how quickly we got sliced apart by that evolved draconoid. Like you would ever want that to happen. <laughs> it's just... It's pointless. The other problem with achievements is when they go in the entirely the opposite direction. You get contrivances. It reminds me of that spore achievement, that stupid spore achievement from Lower Theb in Nax. Why would you ever do it that way? I'm going to make the fight three times longer for no conceivable reason to get some kind of virtual merit badge. I would like to see achievements be actual achievements, like defeat in X amount of time. But of course, then you run into problems where you can overgear it and the achievement doesn't mean anything. That said, achievements are time stamped, so it can mean something. If you see someone who's done it, say, two weeks into an expansion, you're going to value that achievement a little bit more and you're going to think more highly of that person than someone that does it, say, two years into an expansion. Anyway, achievements for doing what you should be doing anyway seem utterly pointless. Okay, we've pulled everyone anyway. It should be fine. Let's get a little bit of crowd control on this, and we can deal with it no problem at all. Focus fire on the big dude, needless to say. Use as much crowd control as you have available. In this case, we have a CC heavy group. Two warlocks? Seriously? Yeah. It's really silly the amount of pain that we can inflict with that. Not only are Warlocks extremely good in terms of damage, but their new fear with the improved glyph is one of the most reliable pieces of crowd control in the game. As in, it stuns them in place, they just cower in terror, and just like a normal fear, you can do damage to them and it won't necessarily break. It is universally better than Polymorph in pretty much every way, and Polymorph, in my opinion, as a result, really does need a bit of an upgrade. Yeah. 
Single target CC, the king of it, is now the Warlock. Although the Rogue with the improved sap is quite ridiculous as well. There's an awful lot of CC available across the classes, and honestly, Polymorph is definitely falling behind in that regard. Hell, I'd even say Entangling Roots is arguably better, because now you can use it indoors, and even though it doesn't stop casting and ranged attacks, you can still shoot through it. <laughs> that's the main thing, you can do damage to something that's been rooted, and it won't necessarily break the root, whereas Polymorph breaks no matter what you do, and it heals the target to full. It's rubbish! Absolutely rubbish. At least it's reliable. It doesn't break, but still. In comparison to the rest of it, pff, why even bother? Now Raz is buggering off again, as you can see. He cannot stop. He is pissed off. No doubt about that. Now, this room. Trash isn't all that hard, really. You pull these over, and if they go anywhere near those pieces of Quicksilver on the ground, they will come to life. What you want to do is try and kill them as quickly as possible. If you do end up getting some Quicksilver near you, well, you can try and move the Elemental away from it, and then it will freeze again in place, or you can do damage to it. If the Quicksilver is alive, the chances are you're going to be taking a stacking AoE fire damage debuff, and that is not too good. You will see an example of that shortly, I believe. I think we end up pulling some of the Quicksilver blobs with us when we take this. There we go, and I believe there's a Quicksilver behind him right there. So you're going to be taking fire damage here, not too much to worry about, but you see that stack right there, that's not too good. Get rid of the Quicksilver as quickly as possible there, you need to nuke it down. Got a big stack on there, it's not very pleasant, there we go, it's now frozen back in place. The alternative of course being you can nuke down the Elemental and the Quicksilver will freeze and become harmless, it's entirely up to you. Now, this fight looks simple from a DPS perspective, but let me assure you it is not simple from a tanking perspective, so your tank's going to have to really be on the ball for it. The mechanics are pretty much identical to the normal mode, and as a result, you are going to have to melt his special Quicksilver armor in that furnace in the middle. While he is in the furnace, he will take a stacking debuff. However, he will do massive damage to the group that stacks up to a very quickly unhealable level. It is not what I would call nice in any way. In the heroic mode, he also brings in some adds around halfway through the fight. The tank is going to take massive damage while in the furnace, so he's got to be incredibly fast on his feet. And of course, make sure that you do not lose aggro in the process. A Death Knight is a good option for this and should be able to hold aggro at range, which is always good. Okay, so there you see. Pulled him into it, and we've caused his armor to collapse. Now, once that flame goes up, his armor is reforged. You've got to bring him back in there again, and you've got to do a lot of damage to him as quickly as possible. The longer he's in there, the more damage you can do to him. However, you do have to watch out because it will do way more damage to you. It's not a particularly good idea. If he's got that silvery sheen on him, that means it's melted. There we go. It's back up again. Pull it in. Pull it out. And that really is about all there is to it. Oh yeah, watch out for those on the floor as well. Expanding pools of molten lava that will hurt and kill you very quickly. For range DPS, no problem at all, but it's pretty tough on the healer and the tank has to be on the ball. It's a good encounter nonetheless, and I don't think we can always expect every encounter to be a challenge to the entire group, although the more that are, the better. The simple fact is this. If you are trying to prepare a group for raiding, whether or not it be the lowliest scrub, or whether or not it be the highest level player, the only way you can really do that if you're asking people to go and prepare in heroics is to provide content that challenges the entire group, because a raid certainly will not let you get away with that. Unless it's a bad raid, in which case, you know, it's the reason that 40 mans were actually taken out of the game, and a lot of people still don't like that, but the argument Blizzard made was fairly compelling, in that it's very hard to ensure that you do a 40-man encounter where all 40 people have to be on the ball and engaged. Most of the content you could be carried through, there were some exceptions, quite a lot of the Nax stuff for instance, you really couldn't be carried too much in, and some of AQ40 as well, but the rest of it, yeah, you could be carried along by a core group of 25 good people, which is why they reduced it down. I imagine lag was also an issue in performance factors. So, if you want to talk about 40 mans and 25 mans, then by all means, leave a comment in the section below. I'm sure we can have a rousing discussion that would involve people shouting at each other and getting very angry over video games. Now, these two things are rather unpleasant. They do hit quite hard, as you can see. Nice bit of avoidance that we've got on Wakes there, but once he does get hit by it, yeah, a little unpleasant. Now, th these things are weird because they cause a meteor, but 
For the longest time, the meteor effect has been something that falls from the sky and splits damage depending on how many people it hits. So if it hits one person, it one-shots them. Here, it's they've really mucked it up here. I don't know why they call it meteor, because that's not what those meteors do at all. They just do AoE damage, and that's it. It's not split or anything like that. I would ask Blizzard to change it. Please don't make it a meteor, because we've been doing this for ages, and we know what a meteor is, and we know what to expect. And when it's not a meteor, we get very sad. Yeah? Throw a bone to the old schoolers, eh? Now, over there, you can see the room with the final boss in it. We did try and jump off there, maybe see if we could make our way around there. You can't, so you are going to end up pulling these packs. There is not an awful lot to worry about on them. You've got a boar. That's fairly appropriate, considering these packs. Admittedly, we have the optimal possible group for this, because we can banish both elementals. If you've got a warlock and a shaman in your group, you can have the same thing going on. So that's very helpful for you. Otherwise, they'll shoot a fiery laser. It's not a big deal. Just to do damage, they will shoot fireballs at you. Again, also not really a big deal. They do barely anything whatsoever. Now, if you were paying attention, you'll notice that I said final boss, and you'll say, Wait, Turtle Biscuit, there are five bosses, not four. You are correct. However, right now, in heroic mode, this is impossible. This is, of course, beauty, and Mr. Ironhorn is very upset about that, considering the beast was what he was trapped in for ages. You can't kill him on heroic mode right now. You just can't. The reason being, in the current state of the beta, as of a couple of days ago when this was recorded, those ads do the same damage as the boss, they can't be crowd controlled, they move way too fast so they can't be kited, and even popping all cooldowns, you simply cannot do enough damage to bring them down. So it is vastly overtuned. I'll show you a couple of wipes at the end just to show you exactly what I mean. So we're going to be skipping that one for the moment and going straight on to the last boss. Couple more pack pulls right here. I would recommend that you clear it all out because this boss is going to involve kiting. Now, of all the bosses we've done, this is probably the most disappointing. On normal mode, it is pretty much the same. However, as of a couple of days ago, I heard, I haven't confirmed this, but I heard they took out one of the primary mechanics and they just then put it into heroic mode and said, oh, look, it's heroic now. No, it's not. This is the old normal mode that they've put in here, just slightly tuned up. So here's what he's going to do. He's going to spawn a bunch of adds and you're going to have to kite those adds because those adds have a healing debuff. They have to be away from the group, otherwise the group will die. So they can be kited via an awful lot of different classes, really. Frost Mage can do it. Arcane Mage can do it with slow. Particularly since you can now do Arcane Blast, then it will apply a slow if you have the appropriate talent. It's really good. Hunter's ideal for it as well. And we actually use a Warlock who can do it very easily indeed. You kite them around a bit, and he will then switch to one of them. He will reset aggro, pick them up again, kite the adds away, and that really is all it does. There's nothing to really worry about, and therein lies the problem, because it's only all that challenging for the kiter. And like I said, I'm okay with encounters that only challenge, say, one or two members of the group, but this is what the normal mode was. And now the normal mode apparently doesn't have the healing debuff. They took it out, which means the fight is completely impotent and pointless. You don't even need to kite anymore. You can just kill the adds, which means it's a waste of time. So, yeah, I'm not exactly happy about that. I would have liked it if they just buffed this up an awful lot more. That would have made sense, surely. Oh yeah, and Raz kills most of these ads, so you don't really have to worry about that. But it, it's very sad, because Raz ends up getting owned by the Twilight Lord. Very unpleasant indeed. He gets his heart stopped, and he falls over. Oh well, rest in peace, Raz. As to what else he does, pretty much generic things. He throws a shadow dart on people, he does a thunderclap. Stay away from him. It doesn't do enough damage to be threatening anyway, so it's not something you really even need to consider. Bearing in mind, we are now appropriately geared for heroics. Mostly. I'm still in about 325, and they recommend 333, but for DPS, obviously, it doesn't matter so much. And the tank is in 333 or higher, so this is the level that you should be. Now, I'm not going to discount the efforts of our Warlock, because he's really good and he absolutely knows what he's doing. He's doing a great job of kiting around there. Any Hunter can do it, any Mage could do it if he was Frost or Arcane spec'd. But aside from that, that's really it. You see the Thunderclap going off there for about 12k, big deal, no one really cares. Shadow Dots that can be gotten rid of or healed over. There's the switch right there. That's when you've got to get your targets back pretty quickly. What you don't want is for the adds to start beating on the tank because they'll start applying the healing debuff to him, which means that the tank can die. But picking them up is not particularly difficult. He's got something called Stone Blow, which will increase his melee damage by 50%. But what are you going to do other than heal or pop cooldowns? That's about it. 
And there you go. So yeah, probably the most disappointing boss of the lot. The rest are just really good because they test different parts of the group. And this does as well. It's just not what I was hoping for from a heroic mode because I've seen all of this in normal. Like I said, instead of buffing up heroic mode and adding additional mechanics, which is what they should have done, they actually nerfed normal mode so that heroic mode now looks heroic by comparison. And that's terrible. Please, just don't do that. Oh, well, Finkel is not very happy about that. He was the best friend a gnome ever had. I don't even want to know. Should we try the beauty? Of course we shall, because this is brutal. So very, very brutal. It is impossible right now. It just can't be done. Let me just show you how much damage is being done here. No crowd control works, by the way, so don't even think about that. Three core hound puppies that I said I didn't really want to kill. Actually, I think there might be less core hound puppies here than there was in the normal mode version. They must have changed it. Like I said, I did the normal mode ages ago. So here's the damage coming in. Look at that! Bam! Out of nowhere! Oh, oh. yeah. So very brutal. And we try once more and we pop all cooldowns. Let me show you just how long we survive. So Army of the Dead, all survival cooldowns, Icebound, Fortitude, Time Warp, blah, blah, blah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's okay, we're alive, we're alive. No, no, we're not. Oh, God. Oh, God. The pain. The pain. <laughs> it's, oh God. We don't even kill one of them, I don't think. We focus all of our damage on this. Do we get them? Actually, maybe we do. Yeah, <laughs> there's the fear going off. Tank's dead. Tank's dead. Do we get them? We get one ad. And then everyone else dies horribly. That's overtuned. That needs sorting out. All right, conclusion on Blackrock Caverns. Aside from the minor disappointment with the last boss, it's still a really good instance. It's got a lot of different mechanics going on. It's very entertaining. It's... The Raz thing is awesome. It's a nice little story. I like the fact that there's quests all the way through, and it just it keeps you pushing along and actually narrates some of the story to you in questing form. It's a good way to do things. It's a good way to use that new system that they have where you can remotely hand in quests. So I think this is going to be quite challenging to a lot of people. I can see a lot of pugs wiping on bosses 2 and 3 and definitely on boss 1, which is easily the hardest of the lot. And like I say, go watch my Wipeathon video for full strategy on that because it requires an awful lot more than that quick explanation. And we did have video corruption, which meant that I couldn't show you the whole fight. But hey, there you go. It's good stuff. I would like to see more of that, but I would like to see the last boss buffed up a bit. Let's see some more mechanics, as opposed to removing mechanics from the normal mode, please, Blizz. You can't expect people to learn that way. My name is Total Biscuit, and that has been a look at Heroic Black Rock Caverns. I'll see you next time.